Hi, John Valvano here, and in this video I'd like to give you a brief introduction uh, to Lab 6. Uh, please start by reading Chapter 6 in the book, and we've uh, put together videos and examples in the ebook Chapters 12 and 13, which apply to Lab 6. Now, obviously, uh, read the Lab 6 assignment. Uh, that'll help clarify what is exactly you have to do. All right, so in this video, I'm going to review the starter code, open up some Excel sheets, and then walk you through the design steps. I'm not doing the whole lab, obviously. All right, let's get started. All right, here is the uh, Lab 6 uh, starter file, and let me begin by showing you a couple of uh, Excel sheets. Let's begin with this one right there. Open up. This DAC. Um, XLS uh, contains two things of interest. First, uh, it contains a, um, an example sine wave. Now you saw there's a bunch of other Excel sheets in there with different size bits, uh, different shapes and whatever. Uh, and I'm going to uh, create a 4-bit 32-element sine wave by using the data here plotted in this waveform. So I'll do a copy there. All right. I'm going to leave this open because I need something else. Uh, and the next thing I'm going to do is open the project. And this waveform is probably best put into sound as a private structure. OK, so we'll paste it in here as a private structure. All right. Let me go back and take one other thing. Down here, assuming your bus clock is 80 megahertz and your points per wave, in other words, the table is 32 elements. These are the reload values that you could use to specify to create various notes on the chromatic scale. So I'm going to copy that. Okay. And then over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into um, I'm going to put it into uh, sound.h. Sound.h. I'm going to put it in here uh, because these are the notes here that I could pass into my sound play here in this function. All right. All right, so now uh, let me walk you through uh, the design process. OK. There's a couple of easy programs you're going to write uh, in DAC. Uh, this one simply initializes uh, port B as an output. Pretty simple, straightforward, like we've been doing all semester. And if you thought that one was easy, this one's even easier. Write one 4-bit value to, uh, to port B. All right, that's your job. Write those two. Um, and then after you've written those two, you can build the circuit and test your DAC. All right. Um, OK, so the next thing you would do is build the circuit. Now, we've already showed you how to design it in the previous lectures, uh, particularly in class. But for the lab, you're going to have to create a circuit diagram. In other words, uh, take the output ports here, decide which ones you're going to use, and connect them up to some resistors. And again, the, um, uh, the design of this was done in a previous lecture. OK, we're going to call that DAC out. Uh, now, if you now you're going to have to specify exactly which resistor values and which ports you're going to use. Now, if you want to have uh, a six-bit DAC, uh, you're going to need two more resistors. And that's okay. That's uh, that's completely optional. Once I hook it up to the speaker, uh, the circuit will look like this, where this is probably about 32 ohms. Okay, but for most of the testing, we're going to use it without the headphones attached. Obviously, the second part that you got to do is choose another port and hook up either three or four switches. We don't care, uh, however many you have. You're going to hook these up, obviously, to input pins using either internal or external resistors. Uh, we don't care. And you can use positive or negative logic. We don't care about that either. Uh, most people use uh, positive logic. OK, so you're going to create a circuit diagram like this, a much prettier, of course, and you're going to include that in your lab manual. OK, uh, the next step is, uh, is also fairly simple, is you're going to create a function in the piano module which initializes, uh, um, initializes 
whatever pins you attached your keys to uh, as inputs. Okay. Again, this is nothing fancy about uh, what we've been doing all semester. Now, using internal or external pull-ups uh, or pull-downs, okay? So if you're using uh, positive logic, you're going to see uh, have to set GPIO underline port E if that's where you've connected it, uh, the PDRR register, okay? So uh, if you're using internal pull-downs, uh, in positive logic, you're only going to set that register, set the corresponding bits in that register. And then down here, we don't particularly care how you, uh, how you manage it, uh, but this is where you're going to read and mask uh, the input uh, keys. Okay? All right, so those two functions are fairly easy to write, and you should test them. All right. Now, the, the sound is a little more complicated. What you got to do here is we're going to initialize Sysdic uh, for interrupts, probably turned off. Uh, we are going to um, um, uh, initialize any flags or counters or indices, whatever you got, any, glo any shared global variables uh, are going to be, um, are gonna be uh, initialized here. Uh, and uh, we probably want to keep it initially off. Okay, so uh, start with quiet. Whatever, however you do, however you do quiet. Um, the other thing that is probably in uh, in sound play is probably the interrupt service routine for the Cystic. And then here's our table. Obviously, this is a vector table, so we're going to call the Cystic handler exactly that. Okay, can't. Don't change it to anything else. And so we're going to probably define the cystic handler in here. Uh, and again, this is what we did in class. Okay. And so here you're going to output one or maybe zero if you've got a flag set uh, value to the DAC by calling DAC out, obviously. All right, so um, now we got to change the things and we'll compile. The sound play is probably pretty simple. Um, there might be a flag that I set that says, hey, start making sound. Might be some global semaphore, but the particular thing we're going to do is set the, um, the reload value, nested vector interrupt controller, uh, underline cystic, underline reload. Where are you down there? Reload. That one, reload R. Probably going to set that to some value, like period. That's how we pass it in. Again, don't set the, um, uh, don't uh, write to the current, don't reset the counters, don't reset the, just turn the flag on. Uh, and then here, obviously, we're going to test the flag and make sure it works. All right. Uh, and then in the main program, uh, what you're probably going to do is read the keyboards here. from the piano keyboard, and then call sound play with a specific note, if one key, with whatever note you want. Uh, and then you have to worry about some way to make it quiet. So however you do quiet, um, you do quiet either by setting the flag equal to zero, or disarming cystic, uh, however you want to make quiet. All right, and that's if no keys are pressed. All right, so there's some more videos here in this section that shows you how to test things. Um, and, and again, it's not supposed to be that complicated. Um, uh, Texas uh, init here will turn on the 80 megahertz um, bus clock and enable PD3 here, uh, PD3 will be uh, an oscilloscope. And you'll see that in subsequent uh, videos. All right. Uh, enjoy this lab. Uh, it's not too, it's a lot of fun. Uh, enjoy it. Okay. Uh, more videos to come.